Hello, my name is Bjorn and this is a Yeti tutorial, also including a V-Ray setup tutorial of sorts. I'm gonna show just how I usually set up my V-Ray settings for um, rendering out Yeti. For, and right now it's looking like this. I'm gonna show you how to apply a texture to this because it's something that I've been asked a lot for some reason. Uh, so here we go, and I'm using V-Ray. So I'm just gonna create a V-Ray hair material and uh, well how do I add uh, textures to this well first of all there's some presets out here that you can choose from and it's going to determine how your texture looks because um, hair is reflective in a special way so uh, I'm going to add a file here and I'm going to uh, turn off any pre-filtering settings so we have the file I'm also going to go to attributes and add a texture input gamma to my file. So I plug this file into the overall color of my fur, uh, hair, slash hair, and I'm going to create a, a V-Ray hair sampler that I'm going to plug into the default color of my texture file. Alright, so pick your Yeti node and assign the material to that Yeti node. And if we click render now, we're getting um, a dark result, which is where the uh, render settings come into play. So let's uh, go to V-Ray and um, just turn on and use the V-Ray frame buffer. And usually in here you can change the, um, the filter size to the higher the better and the longer it takes to render out. Also this number, the lower the better. And this is uh, this has to do with flickering. You can also set the um, AA filter type to Gaussian if you want. Environment is for um, environment, which is nice. Here, uh, don't affect colors, it's something you need to check off. And uh, the gamma is 2.2, and that's what I usually use. Uh, and this is not the ultimate solution, this is just what I usually do. Uh, global illumination is something I'm using. Uh, again, here I'm using brute force and light cache for secondary bounces. Um, then brute force GI is uh, something where, again, the higher number, the um, the more detail you get, but the longer render times. So this is really something to be careful with. Uh, this one. The subdivisions level again, usually two. Uh, I use pre filtering because it reduces flickering in the fur, which is a common problem. Um, and uh, ray trace threshold is something I changed to. The lower the better. So it takes longer time to render, but it will, it may, it may uh, reduce flickering of your. Uh, for. And this subdivision multiplier is just multiplying everything, so be careful with that. But it's a quick and dirty way to just turn settings up and see if something's working or not. Also, check the little uh, S, uh, sRGB box in the lower corner of your V-Ray render thing me to get the um, to get the linear workflow, which is what <laughs> I've been setting up. <laughs> So that's how to get texture on uh, on your fur, and I know for instancing, it's a whole different story. But um, if you're just doing a fur like my quadruped bear, then this is how I did it. This is how I got color on my fur. Um, as a final advice, uh, put the same color on the base mesh as you give the fur, only make it darker. That way you'll uh, patch up holes that you didn't really cover in your groom. Um, if you have to be quick about it, but also just as a general thing,